and welcome to Pick 6 Movies, you know, the informative and hilarious podcast where each season the hosts select six movies all related to a common theme. Then, on each episode, they give some history behind how and why the movie got made. That's the interesting part. And then following that, the two hosts give you a full review of the movie with snarky remarks and silly voices and all manner of jokes and nonsense. That's the hilarious part. Who are these hosts of which I speak? Well, it's none other than me, Chad Cooper, and my lifelong pal and dearest friend in the whole wide world, Mr. Bo Ranstall. This season's theme is Stream On, featuring half a dozen movies that were made for or distributed by streaming services. And this is the season finale, where we are headed back into the magical land of Bezos, also known as Amazon Prime Video. This is the season finale, and boy, do we have a movie for you, The Tomorrow War. It's got time travel and big name stars like Chris Pratt from Jurassic World and the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, and who else is in here? Oh, J.K. Simmons from those Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, and uh, he's also the voice of the Peanut M&M. See, I told you this podcast was informative. What else is in this movie? We've got, uh, we got some time travel, and there's plot holes. There's thin character development. There's, oh, an over-reliance on mid-tier computer graphics. It's a real mess. It's perfect for us. Speaking of time travel, let's not waste any more time and get Mr. Bo Ransdell in here to fill our heads with more interesting bits of tid. Then I'll be back in just a few minutes to share my thoughts on this, the season finale of season 23. Bo, get in here and do that thing that you do oh so well. As we wrap our season all about streaming movies, it's only right we talk about one of the biggest deals in streaming history, at least of this recording. It used to be that releasing something straight to video was a mark of inferior quality. Nobody expected The Land Before Time 2 The Great Valley Adventure to be a big hit when it was in production, and nobody in the making of the movie ever expected to see it in a theater. And so, it didn't show up in a theater. There was a whole generation of straight to video movies when the VHS boom hit, Horror movies, schlocky action movies, animated movies, kids movies, the kind of entertainment that could be produced on the cheap, and if enough blockbusters and mom and pop video stores bought your movie to put on their shelves, you could turn a few bucks and make your next straight to video masterpiece. Sometimes a movie would be good enough that it would make the unlikely leap from straight to video to theatrical. Batman Mask of the Phantasm, a feature-length spinoff of the very well-regarded Batman the Animated Series, is a fine example. While the movie was being made, Warner Brothers had such confidence in the quality of the movie, they threw it in theaters, where it was critically well-received, but the box office was fairly unimpressive. And not for nothing, but straight-to-video, like most advancements in Western civilization, was ushered in by the robust pornography industry. Like 3D and video compression, porn led the way. Without that back room with the saloon doors, we might never have had the VHS and DVD boom at all. And then came Netflix. First, it was just the old get it in the mail routine. But once again, with porn leading the charge, video compression was good enough that you could stream movies straight to your home. You didn't have to go to a video store. Heck, you didn't even have to go to your mailbox. Just plop your fat ass on the couch, hit the remote, and there was a movie. And for a while, that's all you needed. Netflix had the biggest online library of movies, and then in the 2010s, Netflix decided to start buying up movies that would only appear on their service. It would only take a couple of years before Netflix, seeing the benefit of exclusive content, decided to start making their own stuff. The first Netflix original was the show Lilyhammer, and then House of Cards in 2013. A year later, House of Cards racked up four Emmys and a Golden Globe. Not only was the show lucrative for Netflix, but it brought with it some honest-to-goodness credibility. A couple of years earlier, Amazon launched their Prime video service, setting the stage for competition between the two. It began producing some of its own shows, like Transparent. In 2015, HBO launched their streaming service also, then there was YouTube TV, and Apple TV+, Plus, and Peacock, and Disney+, Plus, and Hulu, and a bunch of others, some very niche, 
some looking to nab as many viewers as possible. To paraphrase Yoda, begun the streaming war has. In seemingly no time at all, other channels were jumping on the original content bandwagon. Sitcoms, dramas, epic period pieces, comedy specials, original movies, all in an attempt to woo viewers from an increasingly irrelevant cable and satellite package system. And then the unthinkable happened. A global pandemic. With the spread of COVID-19 and the ensuing shutdown, as we all tried to figure out if this SARS variant was going to kill us all, the weakening theater system took yet another blow when all public spaces became forbidden. To quote Kurt Russell in The Thing, we were all very tired and nobody trusted anybody anymore. And Hollywood, with a bunch of movies made and waiting to be released, began to wonder if we were ever going to go back to theaters. And so they started releasing movies straight to streaming. Disney released Black Widow, a big-budget Marvel affair, along with another Disney offering, Mulan. There were a ton of indies, and some studios held back while others spewed forth remakes of The Witches and the movie Birds of Prey, a sort of sequel to all those DC Justice League movies featuring Harley Quinn. And then the studios began to see that people would pay a little more for movies still in theaters, and the weird hybrid release film was born. Some movies would launch in theaters and also day and date on a streaming platform. And now, with COVID less of a concern and people returning to theaters to see Big Blue Space Cats again, we have arrived at a newish normal, where movies hit theaters and then find their way to a streaming home in just a few weeks. The recent surprise success Megan, about a robot doll, landed in theaters in mid-January. A month later, it's on streaming and with an unrated version to boot. Sure, the big hits like your Avatars and your Tops Gun will linger in theaters before landing on streaming, but it's the exception rather than the rule. And a weird inverse has happened, where a Netflix original like Ryan Johnson's Knives Out sequel, Glass Onion, hit theaters a couple of weeks before it premieres on Netflix to take a nibble at some of those big screen dollars before it finds its home in permanence on Netflix. In short, everything right now is a great big streaming mess. Theaters are relying on big budget blockbusters and special events to keep afloat while an ever-expanding library of streaming services have realized that ludicrous spending to woo viewers is threatening their bottom lines in some pretty serious ways. How will all this shake out? Who knows? Maybe the big budget straight to streaming movie is done and we've arrived in a place where the big Marvel movies and epic adventures are theatrical and the smaller indie style movies are all streaming. Or maybe theaters will finally go belly up and it's all streaming. Or maybe these streaming services start consolidating into big packages and maybe they add a live component and they begin to deliver those live and on-demand packages by a cable to your home. I'm no streaming psychic, but I am fascinated by the contortions of an industry trying to figure out what it is now after the golden era of movies appears to have waned. And while this writhing and coiling like a wounded snake happens before our glazed eyes, we can turn our attention to one of the bigger budgeted movies to hit one of these streaming platforms. Of course, I'm talking about The Tomorrow War, the Chris Pratt sci-fi action-adventure epic. So how the hell did this thing end up as an Amazon original film instead of being a Fancy Pants Hollywood release? I'm so glad you asked, Faceless Listener. Originally, the movie was called Ghost Draft, and the movie was in development at Paramount for several years. Way back in 2019, Chris Pratt signed on, having been labeled an honest-to-goodness movie star after his work in The Lego Movie and Guardians of the Galaxy and Jurassic World. And in terms of quality, I guess two out of three ain't bad. And he was a solid pick. He's charming, he's got some comedy chops, he was all jacked up with a Marvel movie body, so why not place him at the center of your action movie? Also, he slated to produce this movie. And Chris McKay was going to direct his first live-action feature after doing well with the Lego Batman movie. He had also worked on Moral Oral and Robot Chicken as well. The original script from writer Zack Dean was pitched as a grim tale of a man drafted to fight a war 30 years in the future where the fate of humanity relies on his ability to correct the mistakes of the past. Also, all the soldiers that get sent back to the future, their blood is poisoned with this toxin so that when the aliens kill and eat them, the aliens die. That sounds pretty okay. But Paramount decided that this original version of the script was a little too heavy and dramatic, and have you seen how much these fluffier Marvel movies are making? 
So how about we lighten up Francis and we make the whole thing a little jokier and more family friendly. And after Chris Pratt signed on and the director was confirmed, the cast was rounded out by some great character actors, including Sam Richardson and Betty Gilpin and J.K. Simmons, among others. In November of 2019, Paramount announced the name Ghost Draft would be changing to The Tomorrow War. It was largely agreed that this was a move to appease the Chinese market, who were pretty quick to ban movies with ghosts and zombies right there in the title, on account of not believing in an afterlife from a state-sponsored point of view. Artist Ken Bartholomew was tapped to work on the creature designs for the film. Bartholomew had done work on the recent Godzilla movies and The Maze Runner, Thor Love and Thunder, Detective Pikachu, among other stuff. He was the one who came up with the spike shooting tentacles, and I quite liked the design, if not necessarily the CGI execution at all the times. In developing the creature design, they looked at rhinoceros and hippopotamus skin, they studied cheetahs and leopards for the way their joints allowed them to run quickly. They looked at snakes for their ability to unhinge their jaws. They looked at marine predators and insects were part of the research. Quote, shark eyes were my inspiration for their eyes because there's something very eerie about black shark eyes, said Ken Bartholomew. The creature's front arms are based on a praying mantis claws and the back plates resemble the shell of a grasshopper. So it's a weird amalgamation of all of these things, a lot of predators and insects, and it all comes together in what I think is a pretty interesting way. The movie was filmed in 2019 in Georgia, filling in for Miami and Iceland for the later parts of the film. A bunch of effects people were brought in to make Georgia look like Miami, as well as bring the creatures and time travel effects to life. All told, the budget landed somewhere around $200 million. The original theatrical release date of the movie was Christmas Day 2020. You might remember that Christmas as the one where we all thought we were going to die, and so The Tomorrow War was not released on Christmas Day, but was instead slated for release in late July of 2021. Only things weren't a ton better then. So with a big movie in the can and nowhere to go with it, Paramount made a deal with Amazon to purchase the movie for their service for $200 million, roughly what the movie cost to make. Not a bad deal for Paramount, who got to unload this turkey. And the movie did get a theatrical release in China after all, where it pulled in a little less than $20 million. When it landed on Amazon, it was an unquestionable hit in terms of viewership. It was the most watched original for the streamer at the time, and it garnered billions and billions of watched minutes, which is how they measure these things, I guess. That feels like a lot of minutes to be watching The Tomorrow War, but what do I know? Anyways, these critics were mostly middling on the movie, much like the audience who watched those billions of minutes. They aggregate recommend percentages from viewers, and for Tomorrow War is about 53%, which was still 10% higher than the usual fare. That also doesn't seem great, but what do I know? I just watch movies and complain about it on the internet. And to prove how little I know, word of a sequel has been buzzing for a while, since July of 2021. The original cast, at least the ones who weren't eaten, are all slated to return, along with director Chris McKay. Given the state of things in streamers these days, that might have been canned, but the success of The Tomorrow War on Amazon might still make it a reality. It might even woo some Paramount bigwig to put the sequel in theaters, which would be a strange turn of events for a movie that had to go to streaming because of a pandemic to generate a sequel that's got to go to theaters because the streamers aren't doing so well. We live in interesting times, my friends. The critical response, however, suggested the movie was a routine, lazy, uninspired movie with some good performances and not much else to recommend it. IGN's review hues closest to my own in calling it, quote, supremely stupid sci-fi. But am I alone in this evaluation? Could my partner in time crime, Chad Cooper, have something to say that might make me wind back the clock to reevaluate this clunky and overly long alien encounter? Why, there's only one way to find out. Let's get Chad in here and zap ourselves into a discussion of the movie. Ladies and gentlemen, soldiers and white spikes, it's 2021's The Tomorrow War.